So this morning we are starting with um, your calling can be found in your uniqueness. Your calling can be found in your uniqueness. Your calling can be found in your uniqueness. If you check the timetable, I think that's it. Yeah. Your calling can be found in your uniqueness. Your calling can be found in your uniqueness. Let me remind you that we are still discussing a series titled A Comprehensive Discussion on Self-Discovery. Can you drop a message in WhatsApp that we are started? A comprehensive discussion on self-discovery. To live the best kind of life in the new year, try as much as possible. Try as much as possible to be happy in this new year no matter what happened to you in the new year. All the statistics show that 2021 will be a challenging year, probably more challenging than 2020. All the statistics are showing that. That's why I have to drop that video that, you know, someone said, if there is a, if a lion is chasing you, don't pretend to think it's a hen or a cock or a fowl, because it's a lion. So it's good you know it's a lion and prepare for a lion rather than deceiving yourself that it's a, it's a, it's a foul and not preparing to confront and not preparing to confront the challenges. I think that should be our disposition in the year 2020. Sorry, 2021. I think that should be our disposition in the year 2021. You don't have to be happy like I said yesterday, based on this acronym designed by someone, H-A-P-P-Y, follow your heart. What does your heart yearn for? Don't joke with your ability, your natural gift. Develop it very well. Look out for your passion. What is it that take away your time? Because you are fulfilled doing it. How about your personality? What kind of person are you? Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Understand yourself. And remember your yesterday, what happened in yesterday that you like and remind yourself of those great victories and opportunities you have in the past. As we start this session today, let me ask you some questions. What is it that separates you from other people? What is it that separates you from other people? Is there anything that makes you different from others? What do you like to do alone sometimes? What do you like to do alone sometimes? Do you find out that your desire is different from other people? What are the few things that you that people point out or you see in your life as a uniqueness? <laughs> what is it that separates you from others? Is there anything that makes you different from others? What do you like to do alone? Sometimes do you find out that your desire are different from others? What are the few things that you, people point out to you as your uniqueness? What is it now? This is another very bad one that people do ignorantly. What is it that you are stigmatized about? That people even call you name for, particularly in secondary school. What is that thing different about you? What is that thing unique about you that people ignorantly make jest of you for? Ignorantly. Or knowing to them that in your uniqueness lies your strength. Because in life, you will not be rewarded for your similarities. You are only rewarded in life for your uniqueness. 
You are only rewarded in life for your uniqueness. You are only rewarded in life for your uniqueness. All right. So what is it that in secondary school, they probably even yap before they make guess of you and some colleague ignorantly do that in secondary school, unknowingly. Have you been treated as a black sheep, even in your family? Because of some quality that you possess that just makes you different from others. What are the things that people try to correct you about most of the time? Because it looks so different from people in your environment, in your society. What do people mock you for? What do they last at you for? Please note that great men and people who never allow opinion of people about their difference and uniqueness to hinder them from achieving their goal. Great men are people who believe in their uniqueness and they allow their uniqueness to be their critical success factor. And we not allow the fact that they are different for them to be um, stigmatized by anyone who is ignorant of the ability that is in their uniqueness. And it is very important, ladies and gentlemen, that we do not allow ourselves to be disturbed to be discouraged, to be uh, damaged by the wrong notion created by ignorant people in our society, in our environment, just because we are different, just because we are unique, just because we are not like them. And you know, human beings, they want you to be like them. If you are not like them, they see you as a black sheep. But remember that your difference in life is your critical success factor. Your difference in life is your critical success factor. Your difference in life is your critical success factor. So you cannot joke with it. What are the things that people try to correct you about most of the time? What do people mock you for? As a matter of fact, The great men in life have leveraged on this, their difference and uniqueness to achieve their greatness. This is because they know that you will not be rewarded in life for your similarities, rather you'll be rewarded for your difference. Therefore, if you will not be discouraged because of your difference, it is just a matter of time, you will soon be celebrated. If you will be intimidated by your uniqueness, or you feel discouraged by your uniqueness, then others are not going to be able to celebrate you. If you celebrate your uniqueness, if you do not show the world by promoting yourself, No one will do it for you. If we begin to see our difference and uniqueness as our critical success factor, it make a lot of difference in our lives. And because people don't understand the fact that that uniqueness and difference is a pointer to their area of calling. So they joke with it. They joke with it. They joke with it. They even ignore it actually when you begin to promote and celebrate your uniqueness, that is when you will discover your calling. Once you begin to promote, develop, and celebrate your uniqueness, do you know what? Others are going to join you. Others are going to be interested. Why? Because you have chosen to celebrate your uniqueness. This is why 
Uniqueness should be your platform for excellence. Uniqueness should be your platform for promoting your dream and becoming great. Now, there are people in our society who are also unique. In fact, they call them disabled, unfortunately for those that say that. They don't know that there is an unpopular ability in disability. They call them disabled. And because they call them disabled, And because they call them disabled, they are able to prove otherwise. They are able to prove otherwise. For example, Nick Juvenic, Cobans. Nick Juvenic without arm and without leg. Nick Juvenic without arm and without leg. He's giving soccer to people that have arm and leg. Nijuvinik is able to go to nations where Jesus Christ cannot be mentioned by even the greatest of preachers, and he mentioned Jesus, and nobody could stop him. He was in Vietnam, being interviewed on the TV. And the journalist interviewing him was very amazed at great work of Nick, and he said, how were you able to achieve all you have achieved, even with that arm and leg? And Nick started telling him about Jesus Christ. Nick started telling him about Jesus Christ. Nick started telling him about Jesus Christ. Nick would have been waiting for prophetic declaration and um, pronunciation. You know, I just saw the response of someone on the WhatsApp group. You know, uh, well, people will never change. It's sad, sincerely. Because he has, I mean, this is someone, because he has, he said, as far as I'm concerned, I achieved what I couldn't achieve in the normal year. The prophecy over my life did not fail. You know, it's amazing how we have been brainwashed as Christians. So you, out of thousands of people that those words came upon, you achieve what you cannot achieve. You know, don't let me comment about it. Let me just continue with my conversation. <laughs> because sometimes it's tough for us to face the truth of the fact that for me, it's not to spite any man of God. It's just to make everyone know that as much as possible, whatever will happen in any year, you to a large extent determine it. It's not because of a prophecy. And if you think it's going to be because of a prophecy, you will be surprised. You will be surprised. You will be surprised that nothing will change if we don't do what we need to do. Nothing will change. And that's one thing we must realize. Coban is another very good example. Coban Asuko, another fantastic example. This man has a driver. The driver has eye to drive him around. He doesn't have eye, but he's the one paying the driver's salary. He doesn't have eye, but he's the one paying the driver's salary. This is to let us know that as human, as human, it is extremely important for us to realize that what we term as being unfortunate, because it's a shortcoming we have, what we term as being unfortunate is a uniqueness 
that we can leverage on for our promotion. The promotion of your uniqueness is what makes you to become visible to your world. Until you notice and amplify your uniqueness, it will not become a platform to showcase what you have gotten to bless your world. Until you notice, and not just notice, amplify it. The promotion of your uniqueness will make you become visible in your world. Until you notice and amplify your uniqueness, it will not become a platform to showcase what you have gotten to bless your world. It will not be a platform to showcase what you have gotten to bless your world. The ability to identify, magnify, and amplify that uniqueness is what gives you, or makes you rather, to manifest your calling in life. The ability to identify, magnify, and amplify that uniqueness. You know, imagine, you know, there was this experiment that a teacher did for the student. He came to the board The board was white, it was clean, and it put a dot in one little space and asked them, what can they see? And all of them say they can see that spot, that little dot. In his illustration, what he was trying to demonstrate is that what people will notice in you is that spot that makes you different from every other. So it's amazing when people hide their uniqueness because it's not common to everybody. It is not common to everybody. It is not common. And because it is not common, it makes you different and stand out. But unfortunately in our society, it creates discouragement, it creates sadness, it made people feel sad, sorry, because they are worried about their uniqueness. Can you imagine? People are worried about their uniqueness. You should not be worried about your uniqueness. You should not be worried about your uniqueness. Rather, you should find a way to identify it, magnify it, amplify it. Because that's what makes you to manifest your area of calling in life. There are a number of examples in scriptures. Joseph was called Joseph the dreamer by his own brother. He was ridiculed by his brother and parents, but he did not drop his dream, but rather promoted it wherever he goes. He had another dream, he went ahead and told them. That was what made Pharaoh's prisoner to get to know and mention him before Pharaoh. Because the father he can understand and interpret dream, 
even though they have used him to abuse him, we not stop him from still helping people with his gift, right in prison when he should be sad. Another example is in the New Testament. One person who is an upstart and very prominent among the disciples, always asking Jesus questions. Even though he was rebuked a couple of times because of his uniqueness, it did not deter him at all. They were brought, then there are brothers among the disciples called James and John. They called them the sons of thunder. They were thunderous by nature. But this thunderousness helped them to propagate the gospel to the end of the earth because they were very violent with the gospel. They were very violent with the gospel. They were very violent with the gospel. Paul the Apostle was unique among the Pharisees. And that was what made him to be persecuting the Christians. That same uniqueness in his zeal and passion for God as a Pharisee made him to go for many missionary journey and wrote most part of the New Testament and wrote most part of the New Testament and wrote most part of the New Testament and wrote most part of the New Testament. Today, many churches kill your uniqueness because they tell you to stop demonstrating those uniqueness in you which you used in the world. Instead, instead, instead of helping you to be able to use it for the benefit of the kingdom, they advise you to drop it and thus kill your uniqueness. And thus kill your uniqueness. David embraced his uniqueness of being left alone and isolated by his brothers to be shepherded in the bush and leverage on it to develop himself ahead of becoming the shepherd of Israel. Samson loved women of Philistine. And that made him to go and marry the Philistine women. And this brought him in confrontation with the people that he was called to defeat for the children of Israel. This made him to fight them and thereby fulfilling his calling as a judge that defended the cause of the Israelites. The uniqueness of Aaron as a talkative made him to become a second in command to Moses and both of them delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. In our culture today, if a child talks too much, instead of finding where that will be useful, we would rather discourage him. 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 So your purpose could be buried in your uniqueness and difference. Your purpose could be buried in your uniqueness and difference. Your purpose could be buried in your uniqueness and difference. Even tragic situations could be used by God sometimes to fulfill purpose. Tragic situations could be used. 
tragic situation could be used. So some people are sent to this world to die a tragic death so lessons can be learned and so souls can be saved. And a good example of that is Jesus Christ. And a good example of that is Jesus Christ. The case of Pharaoh was a unique one. You know, let's look at the case of Pharaoh. There's a challenge with the life of Pharaoh uh, that people have spoken about a lot. And, um, and the reason I'm talking about it is because, you know, there are some scriptures when you see it, you, be, you begin to, it seems as if it contradicts other things that we probably knew about God. So let's look at the uniqueness of Pharaoh. The uniqueness of Pharaoh. Now, if you look at the life of Pharaoh, I'm looking at the Pharaoh of Egypt, the one that was defeated by Moses. His uniqueness as a stubborn man was used to fulfill the purpose of God, which is to show himself to mankind. So mankind can learn about the greatness of God. So mankind can learn about the greatness of God. Now, in Exodus 9, 16, he said, and in very deed of this, and in, in very deed for this cause, have I raised thee up for to show in thee my power and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. To show in thee my power that my name may be declared throughout the earth. God knew that he was very stubborn. And he was better prepared to do the dirty job. So he was used. Just the way Satan, just the way he used Satan to achieve the objective of crucifying Jesus. And just the way he used Judas to betray and sell Jesus to those that will kill him. Basically saying that, if we don't channel our uniqueness very well, it could also be the source of our ruin. This is why wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Whatever I ask in me as uniqueness can be used for good and can be used for evil. And if I use it for evil, then I can become a tool in the hand of the devil. What I tell people is that someone, someone is going to betray Jesus, but it doesn't have to be Judas. It doesn't have to be Judas. It doesn't have to be Judas. But someone is going to betray anyway. Why? Somehow, somehow, God knows those that will be able to do the dirty job. And since they will do it, He will use them to achieve his own purpose. He will use them to achieve his own purpose. By using them, God did not cause them to do it, but rather he leveraged on their bad attitude to accomplish his own righteous purpose. Always remember, God does not do the dirty job, but he always finds those that will make that themselves available to do the dirty job. Jesus had to die. Jesus had to die. Someone will have to kill him. And he knew that someone will kill him because they will not be able to stand his God. And of course, they did it. So in his plan to do stuff on the earth, he factored in But you know what? If there's no one doing the dirty job, he will always find other means of getting the job done. He cannot be caught unawares. For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, even this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. 
always remember as a human, we are limited by the words available for us to describe what is happening. So sometimes when you, we, you see the word used, it appears like it doesn't sound right to us because we are also limited in the way we can describe what is happening. Always remember we are limited by our words to describe what is happening. So when the scripture says that his act was hardened, for example, by God, it was because God allowed his stubbornness to thrive. He allowed his stubbornness to thrive. He allowed his stubbornness to thrive. Remember the stubbornness of the man has already started. The first time he was told by Israelites that he should let them go even before the first plague. So he was stubborn. So it wasn't, it was, it was going to be a good tool to allow God to perform the 10 wonders for people to be able to see his mighty power. Someone call it God demonstrate his PR through Pharaoh. But it was available to be used. Remember the stubbornness of the man has already started. He increased the labor of Israelites after they made the demand because he was already very stubborn. Very, very stubborn. So he has this power, the strength to sustain, to sustain the 10 plague. To sustain the 10 plague. To sustain the 10 plague. Because people have argued about the scriptures and they've used it in ways that they feel best suit them. But to sustain the plague, to sustain the plague, to sustain the plague. Are there other scriptures that show this? Yes. In Exodus 8.15, he said, but when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he had in his heart. Can you see? He had in his eye was stubborn and hacking not unto them, as the Lord said. So please note that the fact that the person's negative attitude was used to fulfill God's purpose does not mean he will make heaven, of course. God is the final judge and he sees the heart of all men and therefore let us leave that aspect for him to handle. The worst and ugly looking can be used to build your platform. The work, the ugly look can be used to build your platform. The deformity, the disability can be used to fulfill your purpose. Always remember your uniqueness is your critical success factor. So it's extremely important for us as human not to um, mess up with our uniqueness and not to allow ourselves to be a tool to be used by the devil, but rather to leverage your need to manifest his glory. Remember that God gave us that uniqueness and every uniqueness can be used for the right thing. For the right thing. The James and Joe were thunderous, but that attitude, that mindset, that temperament was what they used to push the gospel. That was what they used to push the gospel. So the uniqueness can be used positively or negatively, but we have a choice. You know, that's the interesting thing of us as humans, we always have a choice. We always have a choice of the way we want to live our lives. On the other hand, your beauty can be used to fulfill its purpose also. Like the case of Esther. Can you imagine? Esther joined a beauty contest. That gave him a place in the palace as a queen. He had to become a queen. Because that position was needed to rescue the children of Israel. He became a queen because of her beauty. This gave her opportunity to fulfill the purpose of God for Israelites. By prevail preventing them rather prevailing on the husband, and thereby preventing them from being wiped out by a man. In summary, remember that your calling could be buried in your difference. Your uniqueness and quality and sep uh, that separates you from others. So the question we should ask ourselves is, 
What makes me different? How am I unique? What makes me different from others? How am I unique from others? This is so important for us as human. Extremely important for us as human. What's so painful about this issue is that many has been killed, as in they've been paralyzed, as in they've been Um, silence because they were accused and abused because of their uniqueness. And because we're in a society where when you're different, people attribute all sorts of things to you. So it now requires a higher level of knowledge and understanding to help someone, particularly if he's young, if he's a teenager, to be able to understand that this difference and this uniqueness is is or a critical success factor. So I ask you, what makes you different from others? What makes you different from others? What makes you different from others? You know, for example, my voice is very loud. So when I'm talking sometimes, someone will say, why are you shouting at me? And I say, no, that's not, I'm not shouting. That's where my voice is. <laughs> He's going to accuse and abuse you already. Why? Because your voice is loud. And it's going to make you feel bad for speaking just because you are gifted with a loud voice. But I will not allow that to happen. <laughs> I gave that person an example to say that. There are things that we will have as difference and uniqueness that might make people to misunderstand us. And that's very important. That might make people to misunderstand us. That might make people to misunderstand us. But that's not enough. That's not enough. That's not enough. Why? This is why you can't allow what people say or do to rob you of your uniqueness and your difference. And then you couch. And like I said, a lot of young people, children today has been damaged, severely damaged, severely damaged just because they, their parents don't know or understand their uniqueness and their teachers and leaders in their life don't know or understand their uniqueness. Someone said, my mom had a loud voice too. <laughs> Someone said, my mom had a loud voice too. So you really cannot as individual, allow yourself. So let's look into our life right now, as I close, and ask ourselves a very important and critical question. What are your uniqueness? Damaris is saying the same thing. Same here, and she enjoy teaching. Can you see? <laughs> Can you see? Can you see? So it's unfortunate, sincerely, a child, have a uniqueness. Sometimes it can be a physical deformity. Sometimes it can be a physical challenge. The only thing that child needs is the support. The only thing that child needs is the support of the adult of his life. The support of the adult of his life. If the adult of his life are able to support him very well, I'm telling you, it will maximize that uniqueness. So as I close, I would like to say, please, don't joke with your uniqueness. And don't allow anyone 
Don't allow anyone to silence you, couch you, or make you feel discouraged, disappointed, and feel inferior just because of your uniqueness. Now that you know these things, happy and blessed will you be if you do them. Let me take the comment and questions. Let me take the comment and questions. Yes, comment and questions. Comment and question. Yes, I'll, I'll call, no, let, me, let me take from online. Let me take from online. Yes, who is talking online? Faith, let me start from you. Good morning, sir. Morning, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, sir. I was about to type and ask if you can give other examples of uniqueness, because in my mind, I'm, I think I'm misinterpreting. So I really oh. think I'm misinterpreting. No, go ahead. What example are you looking at? Um, some people are very confrontational. Confrontational, well. okay? Yes. What do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean? Give an example. What do you mean? Hello? Sorry. Are you there? Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I said, what do you mean by being um, confrontational? Um, outspoken. Yes, that's what I mean by. Outspoken. Yes. Uh, is there any issue with out being outspoken? Well, I know, but I just feel that shouldn't there be like a way to communicate? Because some people can be outspoken, but come off like rude. very rude. So I know that that's where. Being cautious. If you heard me, I said that same uniqueness can be a source of destruction for people when they are not able to manage it very well. Hello, are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes. I said that uniqueness can be a source of destruction for people when they are unable to manage it very well. So I agree with you. If your if uniqueness is not well managed, it can be misinterpreted and it can lead, it can destroy the person actually. All right. Yes. Any other? James. Okay. James, are you there? Hello, James. Okay, James is not there. Uh, okay, James, you are there. Go ahead, please. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Morning. Yes, thank you for another wonderful session today. Yeah, all right. Um, a lot of these questions are, are actually disturbing my mind because um, talking about uniqueness, you feel you feel some uh, peer pressure, especially when um, growing up. So. Um, for those of us that are sanguine, very calm in class, and uh, we don't really talk, it's it, it become uh, actually uh, what uh, your classmates hate you for. For not joining their discussion, they feel like you are. They, they just feel like maybe what they are what they are talking about, or what they are doing is uh, awkward or something like that. So. So my question is, if you feel this, uh, if you feel this pressure, and then you begin to uh, think about yourself, that am I doing something wrong, or uh, why am I so different? That you begin to cry in your own closet, like why am I, why am I so different? And then some, some other people, like your teacher or your uh, your parent, call your attention to you that, oh, you need to do more. You need to talk when your uh, when your mates are talking. You need to 
join join the discussion you need to do more like you need to speak out like what do you do when people are challenging you or like this what do you do to overcome this sir thank you when people are challenging you that you are different yes exactly uh they are challenging you that you are different yes like for example when you, when you are too calm when you are too calm like you don't really talk when when others are uh discussing about something but you don't really join the discussion like you don't um try to participate in what others are doing so when you feel this pressure and uh, they are complaining about it what do you do sir I just said now that that complaint should not worry you at all. It's for you to find out this uniqueness. How can I maximize it? Rather than thinking that you are weird for being different and for being unique. So I think what should be more important is how do you maximize this difference? How do you maximize this uniqueness rather than getting worried about what people are saying that you are, you are, you are different. The, I think the first thing is reorientation, that your different and your uniqueness is your critical success factor in life. Let that sit deep down in our mind that the fact that we are different and unique is our most critical success factor. If that is the case, then you can't get worried or bothered or disturbed because someone feels that your difference and uniqueness is weird. And the whole idea is you need to understand that people, when people don't understand something, that's the way they speak. And because they don't understand, they are going to express their ignorance. And what you should do is to pardon their ignorance and do what you need to do, rather than getting worried because they're ignorant about your uniqueness. I don't know if, I, if you understand my, 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 my response. Yes, sir. Yes, yes I'm getting. So we need to get to that point that we reorientate ourselves first. Because if you don't have that mindset, you can get worried and disturbed. But when you are already inside that mindset, immediately they are talking, you already know where they are going. And you just keep them at where they are and where they belong. And don't let it bother you at all. Else, you might lose yourself because you are trying to please someone else. Um, who else was he thought this morning? Yes, I was talking about Modesola. Modesola, are you with us? Yes, I am, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Compliment of the season. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So just maybe a contribution and a, yeah, just a contribution. So, you know, um, the last, um, the last person to speak mentioned that yeah, there are certain uniqueness that in a particular sphere, in this particular um, maybe school and and um, school and the others, it's as if okay, your uniqueness seems to be something that they will feel as a negative effect or a negative impact in your maybe in your academics or something like that. So out how to approach it in, in that sense is, I think the parents actually play key roles. It, it's important to identify the child's trends early on and find a way to encourage, you know, it's cases whereby a child, you just want him to know mathematics, you want him to know English <laughs> by all means. And that is not his core capability, that is not his core strength. It's how to really build it. Um, there, there was this, um, and, and the environment matters a lot as well. So that's, that, it, 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 it's important to have an environment that will help you to build on that strength as well. Yes, there is, there is so much that you yourself can do and know, but I think environment matters as well. For personally, it, it's, it's, you, you, um, if, if I'm to look at my uniqueness, for example, it's 
it it's not it's more not more um how do i explain now i'm someone who looks out for i i, I like being able to interpret something physical i can put i can my imaginations can make me okay i can actually interpret it in a physical form or um so 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 when when i'm doing um certain exams like mathematics the questions i'll go for i won't go for the probabilities i won't go for venn diagrams i will prefer to go for questions on longitude and latitudes the shapes and all so it's it, it's it's been able to identify it personally as well and being able to use it to your advantage you know it's um your your um your uniqueness can be a strength and can also be a weakness you and one key thing is you have to identify where the strength lies and build up on it it can help you to maybe overcome the weakness weakness to a certain extent or even be able to um push it down that it's not evident as much as it it was before so yeah that's my contribution sir all right thank you very much thank you uh who else came early i don't know okay i think yemi was here early is yemi still around i can't see her okay yemi is there yemi are you there hello yemi good morning Okay, Yemi is not here yet. Glory. I think Glory joined us earlier also. Glory, are you there? Hello, sir. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, I really appreciate the topic of discussion today. Okay, and I would love to share my own um, uniqueness. Yeah. Okay. For me, my uniqueness has always been a kind of a defense defense for those that that don't have the same the same opportunity i have and they are being and they are being castigated or sidelined i tend to always defend them and always speak for them kind of so to the point that even my parents tell me i, I argue a lot and these these are like that's me i cannot i can't stand i can't stand you molesting someone because he doesn't have the same opportunity as yeah. you have so basically that's my own uniqueness basically yeah but i have a, a question you talked about beauty as as a means i also made reference to esther made reference to esther that is during the beauty contents she had that was what gave the opportunity for the people of god to be liberated um, I'm not asking. Yes. I you need to get back yeah. to the people are calling. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm not asking in this in the in the today's world where beauty has been has been as the as just the beauty context we have is just not it. Yeah. We have people exposing their body. If you have yeah. to win in contest and and everything. So in today's world, because I know. Esther's word was quite unique. I'm sure they did not expose themselves. Not just Esther's word. So, what do you say? I said not just the Esther word. Have you seen the picture okay, in the 70s and 80s? Okay, sir. If you see. I'm not seeing, but, like, but it, looks, it, it looks very decent. That's what I'm saying. Like, the like, Esther word now. Okay, okay, yes. So for today's world, I, I, I wonder how we can use beauty for those that have beauty as their uniqueness, as a mean to fulfill our calling. I just need some extra light on that. Sir. Okay, today, like beauty now, how do we use beauty as a means of fulfilling our calling in this polluted generation that we are in? Can't you see what that did? The same way as I did now, beauty opens doors. Whichever way you look at it, beauty opens doors. If a lady is beautiful and she has an NGO and she pays money, organization will give her money because they like her. And they are not planning okay. to do that, they just like her person. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? So a lady okay, that doesn't understand that, that she can leverage on that. 
and she will, it will open door for her and she will use it for good. Okay. But people don't see, they don't see that it's a gift. It's a gift of God. And it can be used for its purpose. So why we you? You know, sometimes God gives us something, we just think God, we are more righteous than God. I don't understand. Sincerely. We are more righteous than God. It's a gift that God has given us. Some people can use it for rubbish. Some people can use it for the good. You can choose to use it for good. You don't know why some banks try to hire beautiful, beautiful ladies to be marketing. It's a strategy. <laughs> it's a strategy, I'm telling you. It's a strategy. Because some men just like the lady, not because they want to sleep, they just like them because they are beautiful and they want to do things around them. So they want them to be coming for marketing and they will give them the job for the business. You understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. All right. All right, any other comment, question? Is there another person that came early? I know a number of people have joined us, but I don't know how many of them came early that we can talk to. Okay, let me come to the floor here. Uh, Chidi is already issued to ask me a question. Oh yeah, Chidi, ask your question. <laughs> is that what? Oh, you have comment also. No, when I say allow, by I'm trying to define what what is being tantamount to use. Yeah, that's what I mean. In the sense that God, I would rather even say leverage on that person's character to achieve the objective. Do you understand? So it's like this thing has to be done. Someone will do it. Now, always remember, God knows the end from the beginning. That when you understand that you know why it works, he knows that if I do this, this is what will happen. So this is what he wants to achieve. And he knows what people will do already. So he will do it because that will help him to achieve his objective. It's not, it's not the one causing them to do it, but he has seen they will do it because he does not, he does not influence it, even though he can, and he can, and he will if he needs to, but that is not what he does regularly. No, he sees he sees the end from the beginning. When he sees the end from the beginning, he sees that they will do it. Not that they can do, they will do it. He knows it's like it's like like um, let me look for a good example. Uh, he knows Jesus will be killed before he was killed. Jesus said, "Yeah, out of you are giving me one is son of perdition." Ah, he knows he will do it. Not that he can; he will do it because he will die, and he knows Judas will do it before he even did. He said, "If that what you want to do, do it quickly." Ah, he knows he will do it. <laughs> you know why I'm asking? It's challenging the question for who is doing No, it doesn't influence what they did, but he knows they will. Oh, they can, uh, you know, it's like they can choose not to. It's not the one. Have you forgotten that God is interested in them repenting? Okay, look at the case of Peter. Peter is a fantastic example. Jesus knew he will, and Jesus told him, I'll pray for you. He knew he will, and he did. So, but it's not happy that it happened. Judas could have repented also. That he, he, he you say Jesus is not, look, let me tell you something that we don't understand as human. God is not surprised that we mess up. That we messed up. Like some of people that are trying to uh, defend men of God on this platform, that I drop video this morning. You know why they are trying to defend, defend? They are trying to defend because they are trying to, they revile the men of God. They're forgotten that they're human, that they can make mistakes. And like someone said, not, does that mean that all of them are fake? But to tell you that someone did they say, it's not that God told them to say it. But it's good. It's like I'm praying. I'm praying that it will be well with you. If it's not well, it does not mean that I'm fake, only that I said it, but it didn't happen. But some of them said, like, God spoke to me, this will happen, but it didn't happen. Do you know, which, I, which is why I like the way Precious responded about the fact that not all of them are fake, but some are fake. But some will come and say, ah, Neo, 
everything is okay because my own. So can you see the selfishness? Because he's own. But the declaration was for thousands of people, but his own happened. So he doesn't care if that one does not happen. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying now. That's prejudice. And using this situation of men of God to say that God is, that we mess up as humans. Uh, so why did he make room for repentance and restoration? Why, why did he make room for forgiveness? It's because he knew we messed up. And he said, okay, he knew who we are and what we are made of and what we are capable of doing. He's not shocked at our errors and mistakes. So he made provision for us to be able to come back. He made provision for us to be able to come back. <laughs> so, um, and the case for uniqueness. Yes. Now, I see uniqueness as um, not even in our ways and different in our events, bring out certain characteristics of you that you might not know how to add. Okay, so, if you're looking at uniqueness, so um, we know I'm asking that for something for me now, the one I call the TV case, I believe that if I'm in a better place uh, for a period of time, there should be a and tied to me. So um, for me, when I look at when I when I when I do this I, I I see what's missing. Like it comes to me naturally, what's missing, what can be done to get this. So that is what I'm thinking about. Sorry, I didn't get that. So I'm like, I'm like, uh, it's a uniqueness for uh, my personal experience. Okay. So I'm saying that um, when I uh, I call I call it the chili effect. Okay. So <laughs> I think that when I'm in a particular place for a period of time, there should be an a, an effect tied. Okay. So uh, when I when I when I actually I think that not the same thing. When I find the same, I think that what can be done better. So I think that it can always be done better. Yes. So uh, my question here now is because each of these is dependent on different environment, different situation. So if it's if I'm to build something around that, for me, I know I'm thinking of innovation and innovation especially as a career path. Well, I'm looking at. Um, how, how does one do it in such a way that I don't know how to put it exactly, but for something like that, how can you present it? Present it to recent. So that's not like you need this, and you give an example of yourself, you need to speak for your own. No, no, no. Have, My voice is loud. He allowed me to speak without mic to thousands of people. <laughs> <laughs> You like, said, yes, you get it. That's exactly so. That's it. So, you when you look at it, the fact that I don't just like speaking, I have a loud voice, everything is just telling you that look, this seems to be what this guy is supposed to do. So, that uniqueness is critical, it makes you different from others. Because if you are going to do this, then you had better have a good voice, else. You won't be able to do it very well. No, not just in the environment. Anywhere in the world. <laughs> it's a gift. It's a uniqueness. Some people are going to despise it. So what we are saying today is identify it, leverage on it. Use it everywhere you go. So be able to showcase what you've got so people can uh, appreciate it and you can also fulfill your calling with it. So what that will do for you, is, if you discover an area of calling, you're going to be able to keep improving on it and probably help others to see area of improvement. Probably con as an engineer, consult for people on innovation in engineering. Do you understand? So what I'm going to say in essence is that that uniqueness is a pointer. So what you probably need to be doing uh, or one of the a pointer to what we help you to create a platform. So let's go back to Nick Dubini. Nick Dubini, with that arm and leg, make him attractive. So he now has something great to say. You will listen. So the uniqueness creates attention. That's the most important thing about uniqueness. It creates attention. It creates attention. And that attention is important to be able to get people to hear you or to be interested in you, or to not to ignore you, not to ignore you, not to ignore you. So it can be leveraged upon. Niyi, you were in a program yesterday, you didn't talk throughout, you were in an office. Eh? Eh. 
Okay, were well, you yeah, you join us today on the road? Yes. Okay. Okay. So what do you have to say? To this question. So your uniqueness is what? You were saying, I want you to repeat that simply. A source of attention, yeah, okay. Yes, yes. On the group. On the line, okay. Beauty project, yeah. This is power of yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I don't want to because I discovered this for a while. I was like, I told them, I told them, the guy is amazing. So, don't think what I told you, your power of passion can work with you. Even if I say, I'm not even more willing to have a person. If you want to do that, you can also get something where. Uh, Bob Risky. You know, he made a statement, and that statement just came back to me. Like, he said, what do you need to have that you need to use? To use? <laughs> or you don't know how to <laughs> use? I know how to use better. I'm using the things. There are things I said. So, for you, if you can have something for that need, Mm -hmm. So for us to uh, we can only score a little bit like when all uh the he said something earlier was that there is a reason why uh banks employ more people yes. in the market. Yes. Not only the market to say uh, no uh, and the bank is my constituency. <laughs> Than, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than others. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think we don't want to be trying to be up with that. 
So, 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 so I think that what we just, what the challenge we just don't have is that, I mean, you know, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So a lady is beautiful, he doesn't understand the purpose of which she has beauty, he just abuses it, basically. So, and Esther for me, that's why scripture is so complete. There's so many examples in scripture that just demonstrate to us what we should be doing or what is possible about the fact that this is a gift and this can be used to achieve God's purpose. It's a gift. It can be used to fulfill calling. It's a gift. If people see it as a gift and use it not for selfish reason or objective, but rather for the purpose of the kingdom. Or rather for the purpose of the kingdom. Is that? Yes. Solomon. Uh, he has many wives, man. How what? Like in one, like the vision of Solomon. I mean, that's that's that level of Solomon. So, um, yes, Solomon. I want to see the connection. Solomon, I just want to see the connection. You want to see the connection? No, there are discussions around. Solomon writing those things, some of which probably in his latter years, having seen, you know, if you look at Ecclesiastes, he said he has seen it all, and it's vanity upon vanity. So probably having seen, experienced the highest of everything in life, and then realizing how, and then also putting down some of the principles he learned that made him to achieve what he achieved. So I think some of them are probably written after he has achieved what he achieved, or probably in latter years, having seen the vanity of what he did. Yeah, <laughs> because sincerely, it doesn't appear that it's wise. <laughs> it doesn't appear that it's wise. It's still no decisions. <laughs> it doesn't appear that it's wise. It's no decisions. Which is a really big, big, big challenge for people. All right, so we move on to the second, um, second discussion today. Second discussion today is on. Um, um, I'm trying to call up the, I'm trying to call up the uh, timetable. Today is day two. Uh, calling equals collusion of your love and hate. Of your love and hate where your love and hate meet, where your love and hate meet. 